Hey guys, Old Guy Gaming here, back again with another MTG Arena video, and tonight we're going to be going over the top 10 cards that I am going to sorely miss after rotation. We started the week off on the dark side talking about all the cards that were mean and nasty and the ones that we didn't like, but we're going to talk about the cards that we've loved and enjoyed in this standard and that are going to be going away here in about a month, and I'm actually going to be sorry to see a lot of these go um before i go too far uh if you do feel that i have earned it hit the like and subscribe button to be super helpful towards the channel oh there we go. all the youtube stuff done all right so i have developed a beautiful powerpoint presentation on the top 10 cards i am going to miss after rotation so this was actually a harder list to put together than the cards i'm not going to miss uh because there was like five cards you're like boom 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 i can't wait till those go away but when I was putting together a list of all of my favorite cards from Standard, the ones that are going to be rotating out, this was a really hard list to put together because there's so many. There's so many good cards that are going to be walking out that I enjoy playing with in most of my decks that are kind of staples in every deck that I start off with that are all going to be going away. So this was a tough one. So we have a few honorable mentions. So the first one I want to talk about is Vivian Arcbow. Vivian Arcbow has been a stock standard card for almost every green, mon green stompy, mono green stompy deck that I've ever built in standard since she released. Beautiful card, love the card. On turn four for her to be able to come in and distribute to, uh, two plus one plus one counters to make the creature stronger. The fact that if you really wanted to, you can take one of your big creatures and make them fight another one of their creatures. And then, oh, by the way, you can put stuff on the sideboard and pull it out with her ability as well really powerful card loved running with vivian fantastic card belonged in almost every uh in my opinion in almost every mono green stompy deck that was ever created so i am gonna miss vivian but she is going uh, the way of rotation this time one of the other cards i'm really gonna miss and i'm really surprised did not get a reprint in m21 uh vampire of the dire moon rotating out one of in my honest opinion one of the best one drops i'm going to say that a lot and then a couple of these cards one of the best one drops in black um period especially if you're going to go with the ores off life gains uh, variety because it's a it's a one one blocker that drops down that has death touch so unless their creature has trample it basically stops aggro decks from wanting to attack you uh because of the death touch because you're going to take their biggest creature off the board for one mana you can't beat that and then oh by the way it also has lifelink as well so it kind of fits in well because whenever you attack they're not really going to want to block it either um so you're going to get that plus one plus one you're going to be gaining the life along with it and as an actual added bonus um and anna pound uh pound to wander i'm going to mess up her name anna the artist who did the artwork for this one, fantastic artwork. I've loved this card on so many for so many different reasons. Fantastic artwork, fantastic card. Is in almost every one of my black decks, especially all my Ors off decks that I've ever built recently. Um, really gonna miss this one. On that same vein, as you'll take note, there may be a little slight lean <laughs> to a particular color type that I'm very uh, fond of. Uh, old gutter bones. Um, I can't believe it's been two years already uh it seems like only yesterday that i had to walk away from one of my favorite cards dread wanderer in standard but i did get a fairly decent replacement in gutter bones and what i felt was a better replacement um because all you had to do is damage to be able to pull him back for the recursion sure he's a two one that comes into play tap but he's a great turn one turn you can't really attack on your first turn anyway and if your opponent didn't do anything on the first turn or didn't have a creature in turn one all of a sudden you're hitting for two on a swing coming in great card i love the fact that it's recursion so like if someone does do a board wipe unless they're keep clearing out your graveyard you do have an ability to pull him back in your hand and recast him overall great the only thing that i ever wish is i wish he'd have been a zombie instead of a skeleton because he was per he would have been perfect in some zombie decks that i was running in the early days of uh, ravnica allegiance so i am very very sorry that i am going to have to say goodbye to good old gutter runs so those were the honorable mentions now we're going to get into the big ones some of the ones the top 10 cards that i'm going to miss that are rotating out of standard number 10 light up the stage great great card uh you've seen it an awful lot in mono red because one of the weaknesses that mono red has is because the deck is so fast it does burn through a lot of its car cards in hand rather quickly and it has the ability if you're in a mono red deck to be able to draw draw those two cards in exile 
for a single mana. Sure, you can cast it for its base cost of three, but you're really going to be casting it for one. And to be able to pull those cards out and be able to help out with additional card draw has been fantastic. Red is going to miss this card. And other cards like it. Other cards that did the same similar things, like any of the mono red card draw stuff is really kind of a lot of it's rotating out. Um, but Light Up the Spade Stage seemed to be the one that, that stayed stand that stood the test of time and kept in standard. Um, gonna miss this one. This is uh, uh, a lot of my red decks, a lot of my gruel decks. Uh, this was one of the first cards that went into those decks because you needed the card draw. Really going to miss this one. Number nine. I didn't want to. I didn't want to color shame, but holy cow! Um, how many people remember the Dramir Flash decks? Because they're still out there. How many people remember the Simic Flash decks? They're still out there. Um, this card, whenever it first was uh, previewed, I thought it was, wow, is that going to be super powerful? Uh, and it was. It really was. Um, fantastic little card. Uh, love the. This was basically the uh, Johnny's Pride Mate for blue. <laughs> um, because you're going to be casting a lot of spells on your opponent's turn anyway. And it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, fantastic little card. Really going to be sorry to miss it. I'm not necessarily... I have to admit, I really did enjoy the decks that came in. I'm not going to lie. Simic Flash, and I know it, it, Simic Flash annoyed a lot of people for a really long time because it was a really powerful deck for quite a while, and he was one of the key pieces to it. He was also part of the just mono blue. Like, he's in my mono blue uh, standard deck. He's also in my mono blue historic deck, so I'm not really have to say goodbye to him because he's still in my historic deck. But it's just a great little card, um, and it is one of those rare things. Like, blue doesn't normally get big creatures like there that's not blue's thing blue's thing is i'm going to counter you i'm going to bounce stuff like i'm going to ping you to this little by little to be able to have a creature that could get really big really quickly was a huge advantage for blue decks um so and i am going to miss um brineborn cutthroat so or of a, odd to me like he wasn't in um it was really kind of crazy to me because he is a pirate and he would have been fantastic in the ixalan block um for some of those pirate decks that were floating around, although I think the pirates were in different colors, maybe he wouldn't have been a good fit. Um, we'll have to give it a shot. Like, Ixalan's uh, still floating around out there. Maybe I'll have to give a, a pirate deck with him and see if I can make it work. I don't know that I can. So I did mention him already once before, but I'm not certain he's going to be back. Um, I was really surprised they didn't uh, reprint Johnny's Pride Mate in Core M21 really surprised because i genuinely felt like this is one of those evergreen kind of cards like shock like you see that card gets printed in every core set so that it stays fresh in rotation and i thought that was the the level that johnny's pride man had reached it was in m19 and they reprinted it in, in war of the spark to make sure that it stayed in rotation for another rotation um was genuinely expecting to see this card reprinted once again in m21 to kind of because life gain's kind of a thing for for, for mono white, like that, or for white in, in general, but for mono white specifically, that's kind of one of its things. And this card really came to prominence, especially with Heliod into play. Um, all of the life gain that always comes with mono white anyway, like he was your big heavy hitter. He was your thumper. Like if you could get all the glitters on him and get, or, or something that got him up in the air, like I am really going to miss seeing all of the triggers go off whenever you're gaining all the life with all the Heliod stuff going on, like, oh, I'm going to put a counter here, put a counter here, and oh, by the way, the Johnny's Primate triggers kick, kick off. This one card genuinely changed, uh, <clears throat> especially in the early days of Arena, changed how the card was written, changed how, because uh, you may not know this or not, this card used to say may gain a plus one, plus one counter, meaning it was a choice as to whether or not you wanted to do or not, and because of the mechanics and how things worked in Arena at the time, that didn't really work really well. It was causing them issues. So they genuinely changed the errata on the card and how it read to accommodate Arena, which is the first time I think we've seen that. And I don't know that we've seen it since. Um, I'm going to miss him. Uh, again, I'll still have the opportunity to play with him in Historic. He'll still be there in Historic. Um, but I am going to miss him greatly in um, my mono white decks in Standard. Going right along with them, loved this card from the minute it came into print. I have oodles of them here. Um, Healer's Hawk, one of the best one drops in the game. Uh, one one flyer alone makes it pretty good. The additional lifelink on top of it was just crazy. Always built for those cool combos where you had the Ajani's Pride Mate on turn two. So you would go turn one Healer's Hawk, turn two Ajani's Pride Mate, attack, 
a Johnny's Prime Rank's already a 3-3 on your second turn. If your opponent just dropped a tap land, they're so far behind already by having a 3-3 on the table and a 1-1 that unless they have a flyer in their hand, they're not going to be able to stop. Um, this one came into a lot of decks, like a lot of like uh, Mono White Weenies was one of the early decks that this thing, uh, started seeing some prominence in. Um, it then moved into the Mono White Life Gain decks, and it's just been a really powerful card that's been in standard for all this time. Again, not reprinted and not going to be seeing it again for a really long time. Probably not until we see another return to return to return to Ravnica. Um, I am going to miss our old little friend, the Healer's High. Pout Collector, where would I be if I wasn't talking to my modern green friends out there? Uh, we did kind of allude to, uh, to Vivian, but this is another one of those cards. Great one drop for green. Almost perfect, to be perfectly honest with you, because turn one, you'd be dropping Pout Collector. Turn two, you'd be dropping something that was over a 1-1, one, one, and then all of a sudden he's a 2-2. Two, two. Turn three, you're probably dropping something with three or four power, like Yarvo or whatever you're going to be dropping in. And then all of a sudden, like, he just kept getting bigger and bigger. He was the perfect mono green creature. He really was. Because as you were building up your deck and as you were continuing to add new car uh, new creatures to the battlefield, he just kept getting bigger and bigger. And then once he hit that magic number of four or four counters, he's now got trample on top of all of that. So he's all the cool things that you want in a mono green uh, creature for one mana. Now, getting him mid the late game, sure, that kind of felt bad because, oh wow, I've got a 1-1 one, one, and all of my big stuff I've already cast. Sure, that kind of felt bad, but getting a Pelt Collector on turn one always meant a ton of fun with a mono green deck, so I'm sorely going to miss it. I'm actually really, again, this is kind of weird for me to be, it's a card that I've played so much with. It's a staple. Um, when building a mono green Stompy deck, this is usually one of the first cards that I grab. And he's no longer going to be a thing here in a month or so. That is kind of sad, so I am going to miss this one as well. Old Smiley. So I recognize, and I've been on, if you go back through the history of my channel, the last year and a half, Old Smiley and I go back a long way with Spawn of Mayhem. I know that it's seeing a resurgence now because all of a sudden Demonic Embraces come along and people are like, oh, hey, this Spawn of Mayhem's pretty good. Spawn of Mayhem's always been good. Always been good. The spectacle mechanic that came with Ravnica Allegiance was really cool. And this gave you the ability, especially if you're running an aggro style deck, whether it's Rakdos aggro or, or if it's straight up mono black like I prefer to run myself, to cast a 4-4 flyer with Trample on turn three. And it's genuinely doing five damage a turn because he's going to be doing the one damage to your opponent, the one to you too, oh well. And then on top of that, he's going to be a 4-4 flyer. What's that you say? They got you down to the low around 10 health. Now he's getting plus one, plus one counters on top of that to make it even better. It's even better when you get them in tandem. Like if you get two of them on the table at the same time, it's hysterical. Um, sure, can he kill you? Have I had games where that's happened once or twice? But normally if he's in play, he becomes target priority number one. Um, so you don't normally die to your own spawn of mayhem. It, it, what it does, it, again, I'm old. I've been playing this game for a long time. What this reminds me of is Lord of the Pit. Now I recognize Lord of the Pit was a 7-7 that you had to sacrifice a creature to or it did damage to you. Just imagine that you don't have to do the sacrifice part of it. And at some point in time, he can get to be a 7-7 flying trample, except this one's only for three mana when you cast it. Um, this card is basically in almost every one of my mono black decks. If you go back through the history of this channel and look at all my mono black decks, I'll almost guarantee that Spawn of Mayhem is in a vast majority of them. Love this card. Own four in paper. Really going to be sorry to see this one to go. Goodbye, old smiley. So I recognize that this choice is going to be controversial. I know a lot of people hate this card, but in my honest opinion, every standard needs a good monocolored deck. Every standard. And nine times out of 10, <clears throat> excuse me, nine times out of 10, it's usually mono red. Mono red has been around since what i mean it been at least competitive at least since the almond cat block moving forward and they keep giving more things to feed into mono red one of the things that i find um, fascinating about Ca uh, cavalcade of calamity is that it was a competitive deck in paper it, that you could build for 40 dollars. like you have these 700 dollars multiple dual land car uh, decks that are winning tournaments in a $40 cavalcade deck with a bunch of commons and uncommons could topple those decks. It's the great equalizer. 
it's the one thing that in my opinion embodies how fair magic should be i know a lot of people don't like this card i know a lot of people see a cavalcade deck with a bunch of one ones with haste and they just hate it and i get that i genuinely understand that but from a balanced perspective for the game it gave red something to do imagine if you would trying to run now i know there's a good mono red aggro deck right now out there that doesn't include cavalcade but i'm trying to think about there's a couple of key cards in there that they're also rotating out like this was this was just another interesting aspect to be able to put this in you you paired this card with chandra's spitfire and a whole bunch of one ones that all had haste and, and i almost made it was it was a toss-up between this and the lizard that does the one damage when it comes in i had to go with cavalcade because cavalcade by far is what made that deck work yeah, sure, you could toss Torban in there and then the deck becomes ridiculous. But even if you didn't, having a Cavalcade deck was a ton of fun. I have one in paper. Love this deck. I'm going to keep this one around. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this. We keep a, a handful of decks that the kids like to play. And this is one of those ones that I don't necessarily mind them playing because every card in there is a, a common and an uncommon card. So I am going to miss this one. I know there's going to be a lot of people that were probably wishing this was on the, the, the cards that I am not going to be uh, sad to see leave whenever uh, rotation happens. I am going to be sad this one goes. Um, it's one of my favorite decks to play because I am an aggro player normally. And this is uh, ideal for mono red aggro. So goodbye, good friend, Calavity, Cavalcade of Calamity. All right, so we're in the top three. Can anyone guess the top three? I bet you can go one of them. I don't know about the rest. Knight of the Aban Legion. Um, I know I've said this probably three times already in this video. One of the best one drops in standard. And I'm not kidding because this one genuinely is really broken good. Um, first of all, it's a 1-2. The toughness 2 is gigantic because whenever you're going up against other aggro decks, for example, um, Fervent Knight's getting dropped. You've got a 1-2 that can block it and kill it for one mana. His additional abilities, though, is really what starts to, starts to allow him to shine. First of all, you can spend three mana to give him a plus three, plus three, and death touch, which means I can kill almost any creature on the board as long as it's not flying. That's a huge, that's gigantic start, because on average, you're going to have that on your third turn. The second side to that, of course, is the fact it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and you don't even need to be, you could have the damage done to you. It The, the wording on the card says, a player loses four life or more. So you genuinely, if you wanted to, and I've done this in games before, where I intentionally take four damage so that Knight of the Abon Legion gets bigger on the swing back. Fantastic card. I mean, almost, I would say, borderline broken. I'm not going to lie. It is a pretty powerful card for one mana and what it does. Um, and this is kind of one of those staples of a black deck for me. If I'm making a black deck, this is, all right, one drops, I'm going, I'm, you've already seen a couple of them, Gutter Bones, Night of the Abon Legion. Those are the first two that go through there, and they're all rotating out. Um, so I don't know really what my mono black decks are going to look like uh, after rotation. I hope we get a lot of good stuff that comes out of um, Zendikar Rising because um, I'm, I'm a little worried about my mono black decks after rotation uh, and losing him is definitely going to be one of them. Plus the artwork is fantastic. Can we at least give Alex um, some credit on this one? The artwork on this card is absolutely outstanding. Number two. So I recognize that I am cheating and I, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. When I pick all of the shock lands in number two for things that I'm going to be missing at rotating out of uh, standard this time around. But this is gigantic. And I don't know, especially if you're new to MTG and you've only been playing in arena and this is the standard that you've kind of quote unquote grown up in knowing what it's like to have shock lands in standard. Because when these are gone, unless something comes out of Zendikar, the only thing that you're going to have are tap lands for any type of multiple mana. So sure, you have the Triumphs that came in with M21, or it wasn't M21, it was uh, Ikoria. Ikoria brought the Triumphs. It actually brought you three mana, but those all come into play tap with no way of not come, have them not coming into play tap. You have, of course, all the temples, but all the temples come into play tap. Sure, you get to scry whenever they hit the ground, but they are still tapped lands. Having the ability to have a dual land drop, hit the ground, untapped and be able to use it on the turn is super powerful especially for a lot of the power color decks now i recognize this is kind of a double-edged sword because these cards are powering a lot of the more powerful decks multicolor three colors i do feel that 
dual color uh, dual lands power those super powerful multicolored decks i genuinely either i think uh desolator magic is one of the people that I, I highly respect as far as some of his opinions on magic and one of the ones that he and i are in complete agreement is i always felt that there should have been a baseline rule in magic that you shouldn't be able to play more than two colors because once you start splashing that third color like like your deck really has no weaknesses it's kind of like a best of and that just doesn't feel right to me but that having been said, and I've kind of accepted that years ago, that that's just kind of how magic is, losing these cards in standard is going to be gigantic. Over the last couple of sets, magic has really gone on this ramp up on power level. All of these cool, powerful cards, all of these in multiple different colors that you're really gonna wanna have. And now you're not gonna have the ability. You're gonna be playing a turn behind if you're playing a multicolor deck because you're not really gonna have an option. Um, for being able to play a land that can hit the table and draw for two mana anymore. It's gonna be gone. And I'm really curious to see what that does to standard. Losing these out of standard is going to drop the power level significantly moving forward. Now, I could be wrong, and Zendikar Rising could bring a whole bunch of different, maybe they bring the pain lands back or they bring the um, the check lands, or as long as you have you know, XYZ uh, basic land, those were in Dominaria those were better cards in my honest opinion because it didn't actually cost you two life to do it um but you also couldn't drop them on turn one there was there was a give and take with those um yeah the shock lands in my opinion are the closest thing that we've had in standard for a really really long time um that would equate to what the old dual lands were there's a reason why these cards were so sought after there's a reason why some of these cards like breeding pools um especially hallowed fountain um that were sought after and super expensive this is the reason why these cards were the super expensive mana base for a lot of decks like this is where you get started like one of the pieces of advice i gave to new players whenever they were starting the game as soon as you can get yourself four copies of each uh shock land because you're going to need them if you're going to be running multiple colored decks and they're gone after rotation, they are going to be gone, and that is going to leave a huge power vacuum for mana base structures moving forward after uh, Zendikar Rising comes in. What fills that hole? I don't know. We've not seen any previews of Zendikar Rising yet. Not really. I know there's been a couple of leaked images of stuff, but we don't really know what the mana base is going to be like. It, we may be just in a temples-esque kind of world um, where all of the dual lands come in tapped, and if that's the case, you guys grew up in a, a, a spoiled standard to have Shocklands back in because these have been gone for a really long time since the last time Ravnica Block rolled around, and they're going to be gone. When, they're going to be gone here in a month, and it's going to be a, an interesting um, power shift in the game once these are gone. All right, my number one card. Some of you probably already know if you've watched my channel long enough on which card I'm going to miss the most when it rotates out of standard, and that is. Rotting Registrar. Holy cow, do I love this card. As I've said in a couple of cards that have been on this uh, list already, when I'm building a black deck, this is one of the first cards I reach for. When I'm building a black deck or a Rakdos deck, this is one of the first cards I, I reach for. I own four in paper, and I lovingly brought my foil promo that I pulled whenever we did the M20 pre-release that I pulled out of my pre-release kit. I still have this, it's beautiful. I love this card. I can't I can't even begin. It's something that black, especially mono black aggro needed desperately. Because basically how a mono black deck, uh, aggro deck works is that it dumps a whole bunch of stuff on the table really, really quick and tries to overrun you in the first couple of turns. So his detriment, the discard a card at the beginning of your upkeep, never really affected you because you didn't have any cards in hand anyway. So to be able on turn three, turn four, just drop this seven, six monstrosity that all of a sudden becomes the most important thing on the table because it's going to start wrecking house. I mean, th this this card is a wrecking ball. I'm really sorry to see this card go. I can't believe it's been two years already. Um, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do without Reggie. So I've lost two of my favorite dinosaurs in the last two rotations. Uh, prior rotation, this one removed the Exelon block, and I lost uh, Carnage Tyrant. I love that card still to this day. And now I'm losing Rotting Registrar. I don't know what I'm going to do. Also, basically, Momo, and if you've been keeping track of this one, almost my entire base for my Mono Black Aggro decks is all rotating out. So I'm going to have to add a few new bags, a uh, few new tricks into the bag for that one. 
So that's it. Did I forget any cards? Are there any cards that you are going to be sorely missing that are going to be rotating out at the end of rotation? Let me know in the comments down below um, while you're there. And if you feel I've earned it, hit the like and subscribe button as well. That'd be super fantastic. All right. So that's going to do it for this one. We'll catch you in the next one, guys. So until next time, we shall see you in the arena. This video was brought to you in no small part by our patrons. If you would like to help out the channel, go to www.patreon.com slash oldguygamingmtga and thank you for your support.